Hello there. Dr. Bill Crawford here, psychologist, speaker, author of eight books, host of two PBS specials, here again to bring you another tip on how to help you create the life you want. Specifically, how to use my life from the top of the mind philosophy to bring more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. Today, I want to talk about what I call the purpose of anger and outrage, the neuroscience that's involved in that. And normally I want to tell you, I have a tendency to kind of stay away from really controversial topics. And here's why. When I go and present my life from the top of the mind material, I'm presenting them to all types of people, all types of folks with the different political persuasions and, and, and perspectives on life. And my goal is to have them hear what I'm having to say in a way that allows them to access the best of who they are, bring that to life. So when someone brings up politics or goes into an area that I think might kind of divide the group or put me in one of those camps, I have a tendency to kind of skate around that a little bit. However, today I feel that staying silent about what has happened in Minneapolis and what is happening around the country is incongruent with my highest purpose. It's not something I would recommend to someone I love and it doesn't define me in the way I want to be defined. So I want to share my thoughts about that with you so that you can get a sense of how you find them value and kind of, again, creating the life you want and dealing with the situation as we are dealing with it. I like to make sure that when I'm making a statement, when I'm saying something, I'm saying it as purposefully as possible. I like to choose words that I really believe convey the meaning I want to convey. So I spent quite a bit of time this morning creating something that really speaks to that. And I'm going to post that in the description down below. I'm also going to read it to you. I know normally I don't read something, but I really felt that this kind of did really encapsulate what I really feel. And I didn't want to leave it to chance about how I am saying what I'm saying in a way that hopefully is valuable to you. So feel free to read this in the de description you want in the uh, below if you like. Starts with a quote. You know, I try to send out a quote each week to those 6,000 folks on my quote list. And it starts off like this. Anger and outrage are valuable signals that something needs to change. However, they become less effective when used as the driver of that change. And I say, okay, let me begin by stating clearly this isn't designed to criticize the outrage that, and protests that are happening around the country in the response to the death of a black man who was handcuffed and defenseless in Minneapolis. The death of George Floyd and, and others of color at the hands of those whose job it is to protect and serve and defend is indeed outrageous. And therefore, outrage is a natural, normal, healthy reaction especially in contrast to apathy or indifference. Further, I want to be very clear about this, as a white person in America, I'm aware that I'm in no position to tell others what they should or shouldn't do. I haven't experienced what people of color have experienced, and therefore I can't truly understand the depths of their feelings. My goal is to look at the purpose and neuroscience of anger and outrage so that we use them to implement change in a way that is most effective and powerful. For those of you who follow my life from the top of the mind philosophy, you know this means looking at how we feel, think, and what we do in terms of how the brain processes information. To avoid getting lost in too much terminology, I like to look at the brain in three parts, top, middle, and lower brain. Now, normally, I talk about how the unconscious and middle brain can have us reacting in less than effective ways However, today I want to recognize how the middle and lower brain reactions of outrage and anger can be helpful in creating change. In other words, as stated, I believe that, that feeling out anger and outrage triggered by the middle and lower brain at what happened in Minneapolis is natural, normal, and are healthy signals that something needs to change. Unfortunately, I also believe that if we use this rage to drive our thoughts, emotions, and behavior, we have the potential to make less than purposeful decisions. And the reason for that is we're coming from the unconscious reactive brain versus the purposeful, responsible, and responsive brain. Therefore, if we want to draw upon our wisdom and our knowledge, as well as our best problem-solving skills and interpersonal skills to affect change, I suggest we access the clear, confident, creative part of the brain, which is the neocortex, which I call the top of the mind. To do this, I propose that we use what I call the four criteria. Indeed, to ensure, sorry, to ensure that we are making choices from the top of the mind. 
so that we use the four criteria to make sure we're making choices from this clear, confident, creative part of who we are. In other words, in deciding what to do next, we make choices that are, number one, purposeful. They've been chosen on purpose and they're congruent with our purpose or what we are wanting to accomplish. Number two, they're effective. We believe that these choices will have the potential to produce the results we want. Number three, this is really important, that they define who we are. Since every thought, emotion, and action makes a statement about who we are and who we are becoming, let's make sure that these choices define us in a way that we want to be defined. Number four, maybe the most important, are choices that we would teach and or recommend to those we love. Take protests, for example. Our country was founded on protests. The Boston Tea Party comes to mind. It's in our constitution. The changes that resulted from the civil rights movement and opposition to the war in Vietnam were influenced by the millions of people who turned out to demonstrate. These demonstrations gave those in positions of making the laws good information about how a large segment of the population felt about a particular issue, and laws were changed and enacted as a result. Now, are those laws perfect? No. Many need to be changed and improved, and this process will be will take resolve fueled by a sense of purpose versus, I believe, a sense of rage. The same could be said for the recommendations that in response to what happened in Minneapolis, we plot and plan and strategize and organize and properly mobilize. We plot and plan and strategize, organize and properly mobilize, as suggested by Killer Mike, a rapper and son of an African-American police officer in Atlanta. He's got a great speech on this. Feel free to Google that and check it out because he talks about how much love and respect he has for the police and how his heart was torn apart by what he saw. So again, I want to be very clear. As a white person in America, I'm aware that my understanding of what it means to be a person of color will forever to be, will be limited and incomplete. That's why I would never assume that I know what's best for another person or tell them what they should and shouldn't do. My goal is simply to share what I know about being effective in our personal lives, our family, our community, and our nation. And this means listening and honoring the feelings and the signals of anger and outrage, and then turning to the clear, confident, creative part of who we are to affect change. After all, isn't this what we would recommend to those we love? So in this time when feelings are strong, let's use them, but let's use them as a signal for what needs to change, not let them fuel the change itself. Because when we are fueled by rage, fueled by anger, as understandable as that is, that unfortunately will trap us in this lower 20% way. I really think we need clarity, confidence, creativity, the ability to make purposeful choices that are effective, that define who we are, that we would recommend to those we love, I believe that helps us make the changes we want to see in the world. Hope this video has been valuable. I love bringing these. By the way, if you like it, please hit the like button. Share it with your friends if you feel it's valuable. Feel free to uh, subscribe on you know, YouTube or LinkedIn or Facebook or Pinterest or Twitter or uh, iTunes, whatever you or however you're viewing it or hearing it. I like to bring you one of these every week. So until we meet again, here is to you. Bring in more clarity, confidence, creativity into everything you do. And I truly look forward to talking with you in the future.